The Miami Dolphins are not moving on from Brian Flores, at least not in the foreseeable future but if things don't turn around, 2022 may be his last. When and if the Dolphins do opt to part ways with Flores, Stephen Ross should steer clear of flashy names and up-and-coming, coaching stars. He needs people who have been through the ringers, stood on the sidelines, and know how to control a locker room from the start. In the history of the Dolphins franchise, only three coaches have winning records. Don Shula, Dave Wanstead, and Jimmy Johnson. While we could argue with the winning record of Wanstead, the reality is all three had previous head coaching experience at the NFL level. Around the NFL, the success of Bruce Arians and Andy Reid didn't come until after they had moved on as a head coach. It is time for the Dolphins to work towards that experience if Flores turns out not to be the answer. We are still a little while away from having this discussion and talking candidates. Indications out of Miami show signs that Flores is going to have at least one more year but a catastrophic finish to the season could and likely should change that. Flores' biggest problem is his assistant coaches. He doesn't have the built reputation to pull experienced coaches from other teams nor the positions available to lure them with a promotion. The reality is, few experienced and quality coaches will leave a successful team to join one with so many problems and right now, there are a lot of problems with the Dolphins. What happens after this season with Greer or Flores will be something discussed then but in terms of the general manager job, that too needs to be filled with someone qualified to handle the job and it appears that Greer is a bit over his head, if not a lot. Miami Dolphins quarterback Tua Tungavailoa is dealing with a finger injury and has been limited in practice. Tua Tungavailoa was listed as a limited participant at Miami Dolphins practice for a second consecutive day Thursday, though the severity of the injury to a finger on his left hand and his status for the Week 9 game against the Houston Texans remains a mystery. The Dolphins conducted a walk through Thursday, so their injury report was based on an estimation of what each player's availability would have been for a normal practice. The portion of practice open to the media featured only stretching and Tua did not appear to have anything protective device on his left hand. Head coach Brian Flores does not address the media on Thursdays, so Friday morning is when he could provide some clarity on Tua's status. There have been no clues as to whether Tungavailoa was injured during the 26-11 loss against the Buffalo Bills on Sunday or in practice Wednesday when the finger injury was listed for the first time to go along with the rib injury for which he's still receiving treatment. The Dolphins did not report any injuries in the press box during the Week 8 against the Bills at Highmark Stadium. Along with missing three games because of a rib injury earlier this season, Tungavailoa missed the game against the New York Jets at MetLife Stadium because of a thumb injury. Jacoby Brissett obviously would start against the Houston Texans on Sunday if Tungavailoa's injury eventually proves significant enough to keep him out of the game, though we'll get more clarity on it Friday when the final injury report and game status designations are released by each team. Xavier Howard explains how the Dolphins can change their direction. Eight weeks into the season the Miami Dolphins find themselves with a 1-7 record, losing all seven in a row. Things are bleak, however, there have been some small signs of life in this team since Tua Tungavailoa returned from injury. They've shot themselves in the foot too many times to overcome, and that's kept them from really reaching their peak. On Thursday, All-Pro cornerback Xavier Howard was asked what the Dolphins would have to do to change the direction of the team going forward for this season and beyond. Man, I feel like all three phrases gotta bring the best of their game, Howard said. You know, we haven't done that. Some days it's offense, some days it's defense and special teams. I feel like we got a great thing, we just ain't never get that time everybody do their job on all three phases. Howard isn't wrong here, and it's been obvious. When the offense is on, the defense isn't. When the defense is on, as we saw last week for over half of the game against Buffalo, the offense can't do much of anything. It's easier said than done, but that's a big part of what's ailing this team right now. If the defense plays like they did in 2020 and their offense performs to the level they're capable of, this team can finally start winning some games.